Graffiti has been around for many years as part of urban culture. Although graffiti is illegal in most countries, there is still a way you can express yourself through graffiti art and it's by designing it in Illustrator. For those that don't know me, my name is Richard Carpenter and I'm a self-taught graphic designer from the UK. With that said and done, let's jump straight into today's tutorial. Ok so the first thing you're going to do is create a new document of any size. The document size I'm using is 1920 by 1080 pixels and then you want to go ahead and set up the following 5 colour swatches so they're accessible within the colour swatches panel and then you also want to download the Streamsy font. The link for this font can be found in the description below or if you want to you can use your own style graffiti font. Start off with the type tool which is shortcut T on the keyboard and then using the Streamsy font you just want to type out your first word I'm just going to type out the word graffiti and then I'm going to make that fairly large and then horizontally and vertically centre that within the artboard Convert the text to an outline by simply right clicking and selecting create outlines and then we need to ungroup our words so we can individually select and edit each letter to do this simply go to object ungroup Next, change the solid black fill to something a bit more vibrant. So I'm just going to press on the keyboard and colour pick one of the purple colours. And then we just want to select each letter and just give it a bit more breathing space so it's not all bunched up together. Towards the end of the tutorial we will sort of reassemble the, the word back together. Once you've spread out the letters, select every other letter. So for my word I'm going to select the letter G, the A, the F and the T. And then we want to go to Effect, 3D, Extrude and Bevel. And the settings you want to use are 0, 10, 0. Leave the perspective at 0 and change the depth to around 150. And then press OK. And then select the remaining letters. And then go to Effect, Apply, Extrude and Bevel, which will apply the same settings. Then go to Window appearance, select the 3D extrude and bevel option and then just change that to minus 10 and then press OK. Next drag a selection around every letter and go to object, expand appearance then you want to go to object, ungroup and then you want to repeat it a further two times so object, ungroup, object, ungroup and what that will do is it will just make sure every shape can be selected individually Next, zoom into the first letter. And what we want to do is we want to select the actual letter shape and then these two shapes on the side. So essentially selecting the front facing shape. Go to Edit, Cut. Make a selection around all the shapes that are left over. And then from within the Pathfinder tool, you want to select the Unite option, which will combine all those shapes into one shape. And we just want to go to Edit, Paste in Place to paste our letter back where it was and we want to repeat this for each one of our letters Now that we've combined all our shapes, next thing we want to do is again zoom back into the first letter, select all the front faces and then go to Object, Compound Path, Make and then we want to make a selection around the compound path and our shape at the back and go to Object, Group and again you want to repeat that for all of our other letters so I'll just show you once more select the front faces of the letter go to object compound path make and make a selection around both shapes and go to object group Once you've finished grouping everything together you'll notice in the layers panel that each one of our letters are now in its own group. 
So next thing that we want to do is we want to select the direct selection tool, which is shortcut A on the keyboard. And then we just want to select all our compound path layers, holding the shift key to add the next letter to the selection. Press on the keyboard for the color picker tool. And then we just want to recolor pick our purple color, just to make sure that all our front faces are the same color. Then you want to go into your first letter, double click to enter isolation mode, select the side shape which we united and then you just want to change that to the colour black. And then you want to repeat this for the next letter, so double click the letter to enter isolation mode, select our united shapes and then change the colour to black. Next we're going to start adding some of the details to our letters and we're going to be doing this within each one of the letter groups. So first select your first letter, double click it to enter into isolation mode and then select the front face, hold down the ALT key and drag a duplicate and then hold down the ALT key and the SHIFT key and drag another duplicate and then do the same again so we have a total of three duplicates and each one of these duplicated shapes are going to form a different effect which sits over the top of our original letter so starting with our first shape and I'm just going to move these two over a little bit select the paintbrush tool which is shortcut B on the keyboard and then we just want to draw a wavy path which covers half of the bottom of our letter and then just go underneath the letter and rejoin the path back up. Select the selection tool, select the path, flip the stroke over to a solid fill, right click the original letter and go to arrange bring to front, make a selection around both shapes, right click and go to make clipping mask. Next select the second shape and simply flip the solid fill over to a stroke change the stroke colour to black and increase the stroke amount up to 4 points from within the stroke panel if you don't see the stroke panel go to window and then select stroke or you can use the shortcut control F10 and then we just want to round off the cap and change the corner join to a round join finally select the last shape and go to object path offset path and we want to offset the path by minus four pixels and the reason why it's four pixels is because the stroke which we used on the last shape was four pixels so whatever you set this stroke to you need to offset it by that same amount press ok while the offset version is still selected go to edit cut set the original shape and hit the delete key as it's not needed anymore and then go to edit paste in place while the shape's still selected, go to Edit, Copy, and then Edit, Paste in place again to create a duplicate. Then using the arrow keys, we just want to move it down two times towards the bottom and two times towards the right. So one, two, one, two. Select both shapes, and then from within the Pathfinder tool, you want to select the minus front option, which should leave just this outline. Any small little shapes like this random one at the bottom, we can just double click and remove that. All that's left to do now is to reassemble our shape. There's just a couple of things on the base shape which we need to change. So first select the black shape which sits behind our letter. And we want to add the same four point black stroke. Again, go into the stroke panel and selecting the round join and round cap. On the front face of our letter, we want to switch the solid fill over to a gradient using a dark and light purple. Change the angle to 90 degrees and the colour code for each one of these colour points are from within our swatch panel. So the darkest purple first and then the second lightest purple. Select the shaded shape first and we just want to vertically and horizontally center that back over the original letter. Select the second shape, right click and go to arrange, bring to front. And then again, we want to vertically and horizontally center that back 
over our letter and then the last shape which are the highlights of each letter what we want to do is we want to color pick again color picker is I on the keyboard and just color pick the greeny blue aqua color and then we're going to manually position the highlight layer back over the letter and then we want to repeat all those steps again for each letter Once you finish each letter, this is the end result. And now all we need to do is start moving or reassembling our words so all the letters are a lot closer together. So there's no real way to do this apart from just moving it to wherever you think's right. So just carefully position each letter, obviously keeping them all aligned. Once you're happy with the position of each letter, make a selection around all of them and go to Object Group. While they're still selected, horizontally and vertically centre the word within the artboard. And then we're just going to create a simple background using the rectangle tool. So I'll create a rectangle 1920 by 1080 pixels. Horizontally and vertically centre that within the artboard. Right click, arrange centre back. And I'm just going to fill that using the dark purple colour. And I'm also going to just stick the padlock on to stop it from moving. Next, what we want to do is we want to create the dark outline around our word. So we've got a black outline and a white outline. So the first thing you want to do is select your word group, hold down the Alt key and Shift key, and just drag a duplicate above. From within the Pathfinder tool, select the merge option and then select the unite option once that's clicked you should have one single shape go to object path offset path and we want to offset the path by four pixels which is the equal amount to our strokes which we use on each letter and if you need to you can change the joins to a round join just to get rid of any sharp points press ok Make a selection around both shapes and then hit the Unite option once more. And just to get rid of any holes that remain within our shape, you can go to Object, Compound Path Release, and just reheat the Unite option to merge it once more. And what you're left with is just one single shape which outlines our word. Change the shape color to black and then go to Object, Path, Offset Path once more. Leave the offset path amount at four pixels. Press OK and then immediately change to the color white. Make a selection around both shapes and go to object group just to make sure they're all grouped together. And then we just want to vertically align center our word and that should fit directly over our original word. And from within the layers window, we can just drag that above our background rectangle. And that's the graffiti text. Some of the things that you can do is you could add a more of a coloured background. So I've just put some bubbles around mine. And you can also put some stars and some circles just to give it that more of a graffiti style look. That's it for this week. Hopefully you've learned something new. If you have, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below. Also, if you want to be notified of any future videos, 
click that subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.